Now, keep lined up on the center line of the runway. Keep those wings level. That's it. You're doing fine. Maybe it'd help if you understood better just how air affects a landing airplane. In other words, let's bone up on basic aerodynamics. It's important that you know how an airplane flies. Many accidents are caused by lack of understanding basic aerodynamics. That's why we have ground school. To get pilots to understand the fundamentals of aerodynamics and make our flight training hours more effective. It's all concerned with answering the question, how do airplanes fly? From a pilot's viewpoint, the aerodynamics we need to know is relatively simple. It's enough to know that this whole field of physics called aerodynamics is largely concerned with the motions of air and other forces and how these forces relate to the mechanics of flying. We don't need to get involved with the mathematical formulas with which aircraft designers deal. But if you asked an aeronautical engineer to answer our question of how an airplane flies, he'd say quite properly that, uh, <clears throat> very simply put, it's primarily because lift equals the coefficient of lift times one half rho, the atmospheric density factor times the velocity in feet per second squared times the total wing area in square feet. Of course, you don't have to be a graduate aerodynamicist to fly. But you do need to know some of the principles of flight theory which will apply to any aircraft you fly. It's much the same thing as knowing what a road is and how a car is operated in order to become an accomplished driver. But unlike a road, the motion of air is hard to visualize. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why aerodynamics seems difficult at first. Air, of course, is simply a mixture of gases we live at the lower layer of the atmosphere. This not only makes it possible for us to breathe, but it is also the air that enables us to fly. All we really need to know about air right now is that it has substance, that it is denser near the Earth and gets thinner at higher altitudes. Thus, it exerts force when it moves. And as far as air being invisible, the aerodynamicists have come up with a way for us to see it in a smoke tunnel. It's done by drawing streams of smoke into the air. If we can see the air, then perhaps it will help us answer our beginning question. How do airplanes fly? We'll start with a double-winged model in the airflow. The action of the air between the wings will demonstrate a basic principle of aerodynamics. Now, by animation, Let's study the airflow in greater detail. First, note that its pattern suggests it is passing through a tube-shaped device. Next, notice that the entrance and exit of the device are the same size. We can measure the openings and find that the ends are each 10 square inches. The middle part is squeezed, creating a throat of 5 square inches. Now, if we direct smoke lines through the device, its pattern will show that something happens to the air where it goes through the narrowed part. What we find is that when the air speed is 100 miles an hour at the entrance of the device, it is also 100 miles an hour at the exit. Yet at the same time, the speed at the narrow part is considerably higher. It can easily be understood, therefore, that the air increases in speed as it passes through the smaller opening. But the interesting thing is, that in order for the air to go at the faster speed through the narrow part, something has to balance this change in velocity, this speed difference. What changes is the air pressure in the narrow part. This pressure is significantly lower than the pressure at either end. But what does this have to do with flying? If we cut the model in half, we would have a profile similar to an aircraft wing section called an airfoil. You can see how helpful it would be to lower the pressure over a wing. Why? 
so that the comparatively higher pressure under the wing would push or lift it into the area of lower pressure above the wing. That's part of how an airplane flies. Some of today's wings have what is called a symmetrical airfoil with the same curvature on both sides. In level flight, this design will tend to equalize the pressure on the top and bottom of the airfoil. But watch what happens to the airflow when we incline the airfoil a few degrees. We have caused a low pressure on top of the wing. This creates a pressure difference between the top and bottom, giving us lift. The airflow striking the fixed wing airfoil of an aircraft, or the aircraft itself, is called the relative wind. The direction of the relative wind is always opposite to and parallel with the flight path of the airplane. In level flight, therefore, the relative wind and the flight path are horizontal and parallel. The center line or cord line of the airfoil, however, even in level flight, forms a small angle with the flight path. We call this angle the angle of attack. We have given it the symbol alpha. What happens when we increase the angle of attack? When we increase alpha, we increase the pressure difference. This creates more lift. But there's a limit on the lift. See what happens to our smooth flow when we increase the angle of attack further. This is where the stall begins. If the alpha angle is increased even more, lift will decrease rapidly until there is total stall with a great loss of lift and turbulence so great it may buffet the airfoil. As a pilot, you'll need a healthy respect for stall. The three aerodynamic principles we've just seen, lift, angle of attack, and stall, are so important we ought to put tags on them. This symbol might serve to remind us of the principle of lift. Lift is the flying principle that, as air is accelerated over an airfoil, it reduces pressure and thus overcomes weight. Let's tag angle of attack with an angle and the Greek letter alpha. As you recall, alpha is simply the angle formed between the relative wind and the cord line of the airfoil but its importance is in the fact that even small variations affect the amount of lift. Stall might be represented this way, with emphasis on the fact that the air flowing over the top of the airfoil ceases to follow the upper curved surface and breaks away in eddies of air. Stall, of course, is the result of an alpha so great that the air can no longer flow smoothly over the curved top surface of the wing. Stall for many airfoils begins at about 15 degrees. Why all this talk about airfoils? Well, as we've said, wings are airfoils. But note the other airfoil shapes. The vertical tail. The horizontal tail. Even the propeller. And in a sense, the fuselage itself. All are aerodynamic shapes. The design of an aircraft is determined by a careful consideration of many aerodynamic shapes and how they totally respond to the principles of lift, angle of attack, and stall. And because these airfoils are so important aerodynamically, let's get to know their language.